We find out in this episode Thirsty's connection to Damon Cross, but then we also find out the truth about Andre's diagnosis. Let's talk about it. Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to KRS TV. This is your boy Kenny, and this is Empire Season 5, Episode 12. And the name of this episode is Shift and Save Yourself. This was a really good episode, and I was literally blown away by this episode because so much is being revealed, and it's just crazy. So let me begin. Okay, the episode picks up, you know, because we saw in the last episode... Um, Thurston actually had a run-in with the FBI, and the FBI agent was letting them know, like, who you going, who you going to pick? Is it either going to be, you know, Damon Cross or Lucius Lane? Who are, which one of them are going to say, because I'm going to take one of them down. So, we see that, you know, the FBI is investigating Thurston, and they're asking questions, and they're asking, when did all this start? Um... And he starts talking about this um, platinum party that they had Leviticus, which was 18 months earlier from the date in question, where they're talking. And we see that Tiana's performing. Um, and we see that uh, Thurston is there with this Asian woman named Vera, who's his girlfriend. Um, and at this time, you know, Eddie is running Empire. Lucius and Cookie are there, but... They're, they got Lions Family Management, but they no longer have the kind of money that they used to have. And we also see, also in the same vicinity, Damon Cross is upstairs, and he's pretty much zooming in on Cookie and Lucius. So we already see that that damn Damon had an agenda from day one, and it really plays out throughout this episode. And... So, um, cause like Damon was like with his date and he was looking down and she was like, what are you looking at? And he said, my future. So obviously I think his eyes were more on Cookie and more on taking Lucius out the way and taking Cookie from him. Cause I think Cookie is the, is the one he wants. And we also see that Giselle and Kingsley are at this party and this is when they're starting to mess around with each other and Eddie's at the helm. And, and, uh, pretty much, um, she was saying that, you know, um, she was talking about Lucius and she, and he was like, well, and Kingsley was like, well, Empire's in his blood. And he said, well, and she was like, well, you better not let Eddie hear you say that shit. He's like, man, fuck Eddie. I ain't afraid of Eddie. You know, so we already see right then and there, Kingsley was making a bold move and was trying to, you know, take the, you know, pretty much trying to, you know, take Empire. And so we already kind of seen that sinister thing was already with Kingsley, too. Um, um, and pretty much um, the, the FBI agent is talking to um, Thurston, Thirsty, and she's pretty much saying that, you know, yeah, I'm aggressive, and my aggressiveness into solving this case is going to lead me in the governor's mansion. So she's trying to be governor, you know, and she pretty much says that you thirsty are my bait. So she's pretty much going to use him to take down Lucius as well as Damon. So then we also see that Carol and Cookie have a conversation, you know, remember like on the last episode, he had told her that we we're going to take this um, building that used to be a crack house and we're going to turn into a rehab facility. And she was like, why the hell would you want to turn that crappy ass building into a rehab facility? We should make it like a community center or something like that. So they kind of brainstorming. And Carol is kind of like really kind of trying to get Cookie to realize that, like, look, you need to kind of do your own thing as well and not be so caught up under what Lucius is doing. Um, and, you know... They also talk about that there's an agent in L.A. who really wants to represent Cookie and wants her to be a brand. But she's like, I'm not really giving it no time. And Lucia's like, yeah, you got Empire to worry about. I don't even worry about that. Um, 
then we see that um, Andre is talking to Terry, and and in this conversation, Quincy has aced his midterms, but at the mean, but in the meantime, Andre is there getting a CAT scan to find out what's going on with them, and what they find is not good at all. So then we see that Hakeem is actually, you know, shooting a video. Um, Maya, Becky, and Jamal is there. And, you know, Becky asks Maya, so what you on today? She's like, well, I got to do this, and I got to do this, and I got to do that. And I'm also shadowing Cookie and Portia. She's like, you got to start somewhere. The same damn thing that Portia said. Like, look, you got to crawl before you walk in this business. Ain't nobody going to hand you nothing. You got to prove yourself. And we see that Jamal kind of shuts it down because he hates the choreography. But Maya steps to the plate and, you know, since Maya's a dancer. And he was like, okay, go go up there and make this work. You know, show, you know, that sexy you were just showing me, sh you know, get them to do that. So he pretty much put Maya on as the choreographer. So things are now looking up for Maya. She's now getting ahead as she wants to. Um... Um, and then, um, what ends up happening is that, um, uh, they, they come up with the idea that they want to do a tour, you know, with, um, with, uh, Hakeem and, um, Jamal. Giselle is dead set against it, you know, she's not on board, and, and she says, and she kind of lets them know, well, Empire is no longer your personal playground, you know, um, I have 20% at the, t I have 20% and my 20% says no. And then like Lucius starts going in like, bitch, your 20% allows you to even be at the table while we're having this conversation. Like, what the fuck you mean? We built this. Um, and she's like, we're going to do this whether with you or without you. She said, we'll see about that. So we definitely see that. Yeah, Giselle definitely got a plan and she got ul ulterior motives because she wants to be the queen bee. You know, she's become like the new Anika for the show. Um, then we see... So it gets to the point where Thurston kind of gets, you know, fed up with this FBI agent because she is a mean bitch. Like, she wants their heads on silver platters and she don't give a fuck who she got to sacrifice to do it. She's all about getting her conviction so she can move up. And she pretty much says that, yeah, you know how, um, you know, how, like, you know, you put a device on, on an animal and, you know, you pretty much control everything that animal does and everything and you always have an attachment. She's like, yeah, you're kind of like my lady rabbit, you know, because I know every little move you make. I know everything you're doing. So she got the upper hand on Thurston because she knows all of Thurston's moves and everything. Because she was even kind of saying that, look, I am sworn to client privilege and I am do not have to give up information about my clients to you. She immediately shut that down. Like, look, we know everything you're doing and all the criminal moves you make. You're not going anywhere. And she says, so you might as well tell the truth because it's the only thing that will save you. So pretty much he starts talking about, well, this thing happened way before, you know, that, that platinum party. It's a love story. And we see how he met Vera. He went into the DA's office. Vera worked for the DA. And he invites her to lunch, but she says, no, thank you. But I will go out to dinner. So immediately there is some chemistry sparked between them. Um... Um, and then we see that um, Giselle and Cookie have a moment, and Cookie's trying to get Giselle to get on board. And she's saying that, look, you know, I have 20%, you know, and, and Cookie was like, well, yeah, I got 20% too that's handcuffed to his. You know, they own 60 and, you know, together, and Kelly Patel owns 40% of the company. So, but, you know, Giselle's still saying that the risk is too high and everything, and... And she's like, shoot, that's what we're, that's what it's about, Giselle. Either go hard or go home. And she lets them know that I called Kelly Patel. 
he owns 40% of the company. I think he should be informed what's going on. And then she's like, oh, so did you tell him about that money we got back from Panama? And she's like, um, he doesn't need to know all of our business. Just work this out. So then we get a scene with Jamal and Becky. They're talking, and he's kind of bringing up Kai. And she was like, fool, forget Kai. Get in that studio and get past him. Like, let's keep doing what we're doing. Then all of a sudden, they get into the studio where Treasure and um, Tiana are supposed to be doing a duet. They in there having a damn screaming match, going back and forth, taking jabs at each other. And it gets to the point that Jamal, like, mutes it because he can't even listen to it no more. Because they are just going at each other big time. Um, so then Thurston is still talking to the FBI agent. He lets him know that Vera left working for the DA's office and she started working for me. Um, and she said it was a love story and she loved, um, she loved being in the entertainment field and she loved celebrities. So here it is. She's at the platinum party with, um, Thurston, with Thirsty and everything. And then, and then we see at the moment Lucius, because he's kind of having some financial issues and, you know, they're staying at the house with no AC and all that. He pretty much tells Thurston that, you know, he has to lay him off for a while. But once his, but once things get, start picking up for him, he's going, he's going to reach back to um, Thurston and they're going to start working together again. And the funny thing is, as soon as Lucius laid him off, a few minutes later, that's when Damian Cross makes his move. And pretty much tells Thurston that I've heard of you and I'm looking for an attorney. And, um, and like, you know, I definitely need somebody to represent me. So he literally hires Thurston the very same night that Lucius let him go. And Vera clocked it. She was like, don't you kind of find that strange that as soon as you lose a job, old boy comes at you and gives you another job? She's like, look. The DA's office be buzzing about him. I don't trust him. And I and he's dangerous. And you need to be careful when dealing with him. But he kind of lets her know that I got it under control and everything like that. Trying to be the tough guy. Letting this girl know that everything's alright. So then we see that Andre goes to the doctor and he gets troubling results. Still at this moment we don't know what it is. Then we actually get to see this LA agent who's there to see Cookie. And pretty much she's saying that, look, I'm trying to help you have your own brand. You'll be a brand like Oprah or Beyonce. And you can even cover for Whoopi when she, on The View when she's not there. And she's like, I'm here to change your life. And Cookie's kind of intrigued, but then Cookie at the moment is not ready to jump into anything. But old girl was selling that, that, that level of celebrity. And she was selling Cookie being a brand. And Cookie was, Cookie was chiming in. But she's like, mm, yeah, she's trying to, like, you know, take her time before she just makes any moves. But, yeah, she's like, this can take Cookie to the next level. And if Cookie wins, then that means Empire wins as well. So then we see that Jamal gets to the bottom of the whole thing between Tiana and Treasure. And the reason why they're such polar enemies is because they were pinned against each other by corporate men in the, in the game one being eddie and then she was saying that it was all funny how eddie was all about me but as soon as i got pregnant he start starting to shell my stuff he wasn't giving me much attention and then once after i had the baby he was like so when you gonna lose the um the baby fat and it was like she got tired of him making her feel like she was never good enough even though she worked her ass off. She never felt respected. And here it is. Treasure reveals that... Because the reason why she's mad at Treasure... Because she felt that Treasure stole her song... You know, from Eddie. And she says, I didn't steal the song. I sung the song for him. He liked it. And that was that. I mean... I wasn't trying to steal anything. But I. But why wouldn't I... Why wouldn't I make a move like that? I'm the new girl. And I don't have no hits. Um... And Jamal called it out. He was saying, like, don't you see the connection that the two of you have? Both of you have been playing in the hands of men. And you are two powerful women. And y'all need, need, need to get come together and make this work. So they finally go into the studio and they do this, do this track. And I love it. It's fire. So 
I'm like, wow. So it, it just took some coasting from Jamal for them to finally get out of their shit and actually go and handle business. So then the FBI agent asks Thirsty about this guy named Victor Horse. We come to find out Victor Horse was the guy that um, that Damon Cross had did business with. You know, he was talking about how he converts diamonds into euros and how he, how he converts cash into charity and how he transfers documents. And he's saying that, so of course Thurston is kind of peeping up on this because Thurston's done looked at everything. He's like, so what do you mean? He's like saying that, look, you know, I give to a charity and I get 10 million and we're getting 10 million back. You know, it's 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 worth the risk and everything. But then Thurston decides to drop the bomb. I was like, well, it's funny because you say 10 million, but all I counted was nine. Oh, this set motherfucking Damon off. Damon took the damn because they was playing like miniature golf on the roof. He took that golf course and he beat Victor to death and then pretty much was like telling him that yeah I'm not Lucius Lion I'm more dangerous and he pretty much tells him that you put two million in the charity so he already realized that yeah he asked for two million to go to the charity and the rest they pocket but what he did is that he only put one million in the charity and the million he pocketed himself and uh, that damn Damon made sure that he paid with his life. So then we get a meeting with um a, with um Lucius, Kelly Patel, Cookie, and Giselle about the tour. Um, and he's like, "Why the hell are you guys trying to do a tour? We can't even get fans to download music." And then Andre shows up, and they going back and forth, and it gets real explosive. And then Andre just flips out. He's like, "Shut up! Shut up! Shut up!" Like, don't you see what we're doing here? Like, look, it's obvious that our customers no longer trust us and they don't depend on us anymore. And how would they begin to do that when you motherfuckers in here can't even trust each other? So obviously, he's had a, a, a life-altering situation to the point he ain't got time for all this petty shit. Y'all up here fighting and pulling straws, but... Y'all need to trust each other to make decisions and not always have this this kind of like this hang up when when things don't go awry. So then we see that Tiana and Treasure are doing their thing in the studio. Um and we see that Lucius, Cookie, and Jamal are in the session. They're listening in. And if anything, Cookie was like, Look, <clears throat> you know, if you really want to make something happen. You got to give people something. You know, you got to give them something that will spark their interest. And immediately, it just dawned on Lucius, I got an idea. He tries to chase down Kelly. So, therefore, we see that this damn FBI agent is still grilling, grilling thirsty. You know, they talk about the dude Victor Horace and, you know, Damian Cross. Um, and then we see that, um, so how did Damian Cross get involved in Lucius' world? It was through Thirsty. Because Thirsty, um, he had found, because Damon had found out about, um, you know, the, the actual card game that Lucius was in. And he tells him to get him in the card game. He's like, look, I am not trying to get you involved in that. And he kind of like raised up on Thirsty, like, like Thirsty, like he was about to beat up Thirsty. So Thirsty got him into the game. And that's how Damon Cross was there. He already had an affiliation with Thirsty way before he even, you know, way before he even met Lucius, talking about Damon. Um, and then we kind of see that Vera kind of has this look, and he kind of looks at Vera like, I got your number too. But, yeah, this chick's crazy. So, so therefore, after that whole thing went down, um, you know, when... Uh, Lucius actually robbed the spot and everything and he got you know the you know Dam Damien Cross um Damien Cross away from there he we come to find out um he comes to find out that um that yeah he lost two hundred and fifty dollars in that game and he won his money back 
So what he ends up doing is that Thirsty, because he had a gun on him, gives him the wedding dowry that um that Cookie had had, you know. And you know, hers was worth like almost half a million. And he says that no, don't and he's like, I'll cash and I'll give you the money. He's like, No, don't cash it. I actually like it. So then um we get a scene with um Kelly and Giselle and Kelly is actually flirting with her. And I'm like, okay, so your situation with Kingsley didn't work out. Now you team Giselle. But then he apologizes that he should have picked, you know, he I apologize for picking um Kingsley as my CEO over you. Um and it's pretty obvious that he's attracted to her. And and um next thing you know. Next thing you know, um, Lucius and Cookie show up and they confront him about their idea that they want to do a free tour and this is their way of winning back their audiences and their way of building up, you know, rapport for the label. And he's like, oh, my 40% ain't with this. I'm not down. But then Giselle actually agrees because they're, they're all kind of seeing the big picture that sometimes you have to make that kind of sacrifice in order to get a bigger bag down the line. So they're planting the seed in which they can grow a harvest. You know, as far in like, you know, lay business terms that is. And then um, also in this argument, Lucius said that look, the one thing that um, the one thing that Kingsley did the worst was that he ruined the relationship that we have with our fans and now our fans don't find us reliable anymore by us doing this we will cross all avenues and everybody wins mm. sorry y'all mm. so um so next they um they actually make the announcement that they're gonna do the trust tour and it's going to start in Philadelphia, where they're from. Um, and we definitely see that um, a lot's going on with Andre. Um, he's kind of out of it, even though he's there. And then Jamal makes Maya the choreographer of, the, of, that, of that tour. So this is a big break for Maya. We just got to keep watching. And then we actually see that there's a scene between Andre and Terry... Um, he tells Terry to put her John Hancock on this contract, you know, and she's like, what is this? And she says, it's for Quincy. It's a trust set up for him. And then he makes the reveal that he has, um, lymphoma, which is like stage four cancer and he's dying. And she's like, look, just sign the papers. You and your son will be set for the rest of your life. You won't have to worry about anything, but sign the papers. And she's like, no. You know, um, she's like, how long have you known? Like, how long do you have? And he says a few months at best. So then we see that finally Thirsty leaves the FBI. And she, and this damn FBI agent, she is mean as hell. And she's somewhat, and she's racist as well. Because she was, because they was asking, um, are you going to see him again? And she was like, probably in a body bag. But then she's like, I'm ready to take down chicken, chicken and waffles and put them behind bars. I'm like, oh, really, bitch? See, she is. She wants that government mansion so bad, she'll even do some illegal shit just to get it. So then um, we get this scene with um, Thirsty, Vera, and Damon. Because after he finished talking to the FBI, he gets into Damon's limo. He got Vera at gunpoint. So, like, if he, like, because if he didn't tell what he wanted to hear, he was going to kill her. And, and pretty much they, he asked him what the hell's going on. And he lets him know, well, they know that the feds are after you and all of that. And, you know, I just kind of played dumb and I didn't really remember anything. So, it's like, okay, that's cool. And here it is. He finally let um, Vera go. And while he was leaving out. He was like, uh, where do you think you're going? He's like, look, I did what you asked me to do. This is over. He's like, no, nah, it ain't over till I say it's over. And he says, I want you to keep a sharper eye on Lucius for me. And he was like, Lucius a cookie. Yeah, that's what I thought. 
Because he already know that he's trying to get at Cookie. And he's willing to do anything to get Lucius out the way to get to her. So, therefore, we also see in this, um, and later on is that Cookie and Lucius are talking and, you know, she talks about how she's scared because they're putting everything into Empire and they don't want this situation to fall apart. Like, they want it to be a success. Um, you know, as far as this trust tour. And she's like, wow. Um, and then also, um, in this scene... Uh, they, they, you know, she also meets up with her agent in L.A. and all that. And she talks about meeting with her agent in L.A. and that she is thinking about it. And totally, uh, yeah, so that, that was crazy right, um, right then and there. So here it is that you got the kids who are now, you know, um, who are now on the phones, you know, making things happen. And then we get the last scene where Terry comes into Empire. She drops over them papers. She says, I'm not signing this at all. And... He was like, what are you going to do? Like, you should just sign it. You guys will be set for life. She's like, no. I'm not going to do you like that. You're worth the fight. Um, you know, let me help you fight. You know, you did the impossible for me when you got my son out of jail. Let me in turn do the same for you. So I'm like, wow. And we see that that dad going, Andre start tearing up because... He has such a hard exterior that he hasn't been able to really show his emotions. But this episode, he definitely did. And I was like, wow. You know, because you got this good woman, but yet you have this sinister side that she has never seen before. But yeah, this, this was a, a really good episode. Um, So that's pretty much all I have, y'all. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. But um, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow me on all of my social platforms. I have them all listed in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, share this video. And I'll be back with the next episode of Empire. So until next time, everybody, take care.